Greetings to everybody and welcome back. And before we go into the sharing of the word, I'd just like to do something a little different today. I'd like to share a testimony to a song. This song means a lot to me. So I'm happy that Brother Bhagupar Shadab is here with me. We can sing it together. Hope you'll enjoy. God bless.
thank the Lord for this opportunity to continue to share the word. Uh, the lockdown has disturbed many people's hearts because they cannot assemble or congregate in their place of worship. Should worship stop then? Or should it happen only in a chapel, a church, or a cathedral? Can we see worship beyond the four walls? And does God accept worship that is from the church halls, if you will, only from a sanctified place, to be the only true and rightful worship? Solomon, while dedicating the temple he built, prayed a prayer, and in 1 Kings 8.27, he said, For will God indeed dwell on the earth? Behold, heaven and the highest heaven cannot contain you. How much less this house that I have built? We can see here that God is so great and it is just simply impossible to box him in according to the size of the building we built. And secondly, if we can understand the greatness of God, then our worship cannot be bound by the boundaries of our sanctuaries. Temples and church sanctuaries are noble buildings indeed to the glory of God. No doubt about it. But that is just for our human perspectives and contexts. God's honor or glory is not defined and measured by the architectural magnificence that we can display. Mark 13 verses 1 and 2 we read that was a time when Jesus was at a temple and he left it and this is what it says and as he came out of the temple one of his disciples said to him look teacher what wonderful stones and what wonderful buildings And Jesus said to him, Do you see these great buildings? There will not be left here one stone upon another that will not be thrown down. Now, Jesus' response could have sent down shivers on the disciples' spine. What could the Pharisees and scribes have thought if they also heard these words? Perhaps it might just have added to their hate lists of allegations against Jesus. But what Jesus spoke under the prophetic unction of what would happen later, around a dec around few dec four decades later, to be precise. As his people, do we read these verses from just the historical mindset, or do we also see that the message is still a prophetic message for all ages, and it's relevant for us today? Now in John 4 is a record of the most profound discourse of Jesus concerning a very core subject to the people of faith, it is worship. When Jesus responded to the statement of the Samaritan woman that has an underlying comparison of worship in the Samaritan mountain with the one in Jerusalem. Jesus' response as recorded in verse 21 that the hour is coming when neither the mountain in Samaria nor Jerusalem will be the place of true worship. So this is another prophetic utterance of a Lord and King concerning worship and that it would be on a new dimension and experience. Hence, today we begin a new series of teaching 
and it is worship. I would like to entitle the theme the divine protocol for worship. At the onset, we would like to revisit the meaning of worship, but prior to looking at the meaning of the term, may I share with you the following concepts. Firstly, worship is more than just organized rituals. We tend to see worship only in forms and rituals. But let me reiterate the first point. Worship is more than organized rituals. Worship is beyond a set time and place. It is perpetual. I want you to continue to think on, on these things. Thirdly, worship is more than an event. It is a process. And then, fourthly, worship begins in the heart, but culminates in life filled full of action. Fifthly, the what and the why of worship come before the how of worship. There's a lot of teaching on the how part, but at the same time, the what and the why are slightly neglected. Now, one other reason for dealing with the subject, as I felt the Lord laid this on my heart, is because the body of Christ is not only going through the hard time caused by the pan pandemic, but there seems to be a spiritual force that has been battling against it since the beginning of time, wanting to destroy or stop it or pollute it. Talk about worship. Now, let me bring out some illustrations of maybe what is recorded in the scriptures. Firstly, we see the story of the two children of Adam and Eve, Cain and Abel. How when they went to worship, what happened? The other brother killed, brother Cain killed Abel after his worship. Then if you go on to the next few pages down the book of Genesis, you see the story of the Tower of Babel. Then when you turn to the pages of the journey of the Israelites, you see that the story of the Israelites even as early as their journey in the wilderness, then in the promised land, how their worship was corrupted by their mixture with the rituals of the nations around them. Now, the other thing here is that Satan, Satan tempted Jesus to worship him during his 40 days of praying and fasting in the wilderness. Then we also see how the temple in the times of Jesus his earthly ministry has become a human pride more than a place of God or the house of God. Now worship is very central in the Bible economy and Satan desires to see that the people shift their focus of worship from God. In fact, he wants people to worship him instead. And his attempts has always been in subtle ways. As of today, the church is going through this tension concerning worship. Each and every church-going Christian 
desires to go back and you want to go back to the known familiar ways of worship but with the conditions we're being asked to oblige we feel rather uncomfortable to continue with our worship or to restart our worship again but there's this deep longing to worship him as a people and this creates that urge to move if we're really worshipers there is that desire to move forward to unfamiliar territories because we know that if we go to worship with all the conditions laid down we don't feel that's worship at all but yet at the same time our hearts our spirits want to worship but then out there it's still an unfamiliar unfamiliar territory I'd like to also mention here the hidden agenda of Satan is that he wants to garner all worship unto himself we see in the Bible the story of Nebuchadnezzar and his image and how he wanted all the people to worship that image it's a kind of a of a backdrop and we know of, of, of Satan's plans and intentions so this series we've begun today begun today will deal with what is worship and why worship we'll try to delve into the Bible for principles and practices for a better understanding as to how to worship in the midst of these inevitable changes that the whole world is going through. I'd like to share a few scriptural injunctions on worship amidst the lockdown. Three of them, I begin with John 4 reading from verse 19 to 25. John 4, reading with verse 19 to 25. The woman said to him, Sir, I perceive that you are a prophet. Our fathers worshipped on this mountain, and you Jews say that in Jerusalem is the place where one ought to worship. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem worship the Father. You worship what you do not know. We know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. But the hour is coming and now is when the true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father is seeking such to worship Him. God is spirit and those who worship Him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to Him, I know that the Messiah is coming who is called Christ. When He comes, he will tell us all things. Let me add verse 26. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. I invite each one of us to just let these words soak into our hearts. Because that will be the key to exploring and discovering the truths about worship. Now let us read Philippians chapter 3, verses 2 and 3. Paul said, Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the mutilation. I want you to think on the three things that Paul mentioned there. Beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of the mutilation. Verse 3, For we are the circumcision 
who worship God in the Spirit. And turn with me to Romans chapter 15. Reading verses 15 to 17. Nevertheless, brethren, I've written more boldly to you on some points as reminding you, because of the grace given to me by God, that I might be a minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering of the Gentiles might be acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. I trust the Lord will continue to grant us the grace as we unpack these texts later on. I just want to mention here that worship is not a mere temporal need. Worship is always an eternal state. It should be seen, understood in the light of eternity. Now if you see the revelation that God gave these two prophets, one in the Old Testament and one in the New. Isaiah chapter 6, he had this revelation. He said in the year, beginning with verse 1, in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on the throne high and lifted up and the train of his robe filled the temple above it stood seraphim each one had six wings with two he covered his face with two he covered his feet and with two he flew and one cried to another and said holy 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 is the lord of hosts the whole earth is full of his glory. Now let's turn to the prophet in the New Testament, that's John, in Revelation chapter 4. We will read verses 8 to 11. The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within, and they did not rest day or night saying, Holy, 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 the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to Him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before Him who sits on the throne and worship Him who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. So my friends, I trust that we will continue to open our hearts and our minds to see more on worship. Yes, we have been so conditioned, we are so used to, and we're so familiar with the ways that we have done worship. But I invite you to let the Holy Spirit open the eyes of our understanding that we can see that we can still be true worshipers in spite of all the hindrances, in spite of, of the lockdown, in spite of the inability to go to church. I want you and I invite you to journey with me as we study the scriptures here on. God bless you. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for the revelation of your word. And we thank you that we can see that you are God who deserves to be worshipped at all times. And Lord, we know that we've been, as a church, as worshippers, we've been Disturb, O oh Lord, by the many conditions that have been given to us in order to be able to attend, go to the place of worship. But, Lord, we pray, help us to understand 
that we can worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, I pray that you will continue to enlighten our hearts and our minds as we journey in exploring the scripture. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Dear friends, thank you again. I just want to say that uh, the Lord has laid in my heart this burden to share on the subject worship. And from today onwards, we're beginning a series of messages on this aspect. I would like to invite you to see or to be open-minded to learn more about worship. Maybe you have had experiences and you have been so familiar with the, the ways of worship. But in this present scenario, the Lord still deserves to be worshipped. Even if we cannot go to church. So I invite you to continue to stay with us as we share the word and as we continue to delve into the scriptures so that we can become true worshippers. Or let me put it another way, so that we'll continue to be strong in our worship. And uh, do remember to also look up for the PDF if you want the outlines of what I'm sharing today.